Dawn is breaking in the town of Cadiz. More than a million people live here, in its province in the south of Spain. And it has the highest unemployment rate in the country, 30%. Four times Europe's average. And the residents here are tired of the lack of opportunities. Rothio is 30 years old. She still lives in her father's house and doesn't know when she could become independent. Despite her chemistry degree and many internships, her salary is below 300 euros a month. What I understood is that you enter a company so they get to know you and then you stay in that company. But in the end, I realized that I have been working for a year and a half for nothing, within an unpaid job and without any kind of recognition. In her group of friends, nobody has managed to get a job. Everyone is still studying, like Marie Carmen. She has two degrees, chemistry and environmental sciences. And she's now studying for a third, a master's degree in agri-food. It's a shame because we're people who are trained and willing to work, but they do not give us any opportunity. Then you get tired little by little and you get to a point where you ask yourself, why should I study more if then I'm going to be on the couch without doing anything? The newspaper El Diario de Cadiz has been writing for decades about the European financial aid that the province receives. 1.3 billion euros have been allocated to the province in this EU budget. EU is uh, a part of Andalusian. Uh, if you see the figures of Andalusian in 1986, and now they are, uh, we are another another region. Problem is that uh, the gap between Andalusian and the rest of the regions in Spain is the same. But for the residents of Cadiz, Brussels is becoming more and more distant. In 1987, 60% uh, of inhabitants of Cadiz voted. In the last election, it was only 35-36%. That's a signal for, for Europe. Something, something has changed in our minds. This neighborhood of La Paz is one of the poorest in Cadiz. Few have jobs here, and security is a real issue. Diego Boza is a spokesman for the Association of Human Rights of Cadiz. He believes not all EU money has been spent well. There are some businesses that have been financed and we can clearly see that there is something shady with them. These businesses looked for subsidies, many of them European subsidies, but without a real action plan for a change. What happened is that there have been some opportunities who have appeared attracted by the money, they have exploited the subsidies and now they are gone and they have left the problem here. The regions was recently shaken when the far-right party called Vox gained seats here. It was the first time for more than 35 years that any far-right party has set foot into any of Spain's parliaments. They got 10% of the vote, but it shocked the country. Disconsented citizens is where they get their supporters. Rosario lives in La Paz neighborhood and her son is one of them. My son says he likes Vox, one of my sons who is 36 years old. He tells me, Mom, I find that party a little poorer, like us. And I tell him that maybe it's true. Here in Brussels, some politicians are quick to admit that EU's own policies have contributed to Spain's pains after the crisis. I think Europe has made a couple of big mistakes in the past and mainly during the Euro crisis we have intensified the crisis by our austerity policies. This has increased the unemployment in those regions and that's of course then also delivering dissatisfaction with the political regime and then they go to the populist. Spain has been one of the countries calling for Eurozone to establish more mechanism to help countries in trouble. A Eurozone budget that could protect European jobless or a banking union to protect depositors. But they're not satisfied with the progress made. 
and the more nationalist flair expected in the next European Parliament could make them less likely in the next term. I believe that we should admit uh, that Europe is very diverse economically. Such a gap cannot be just, you know, fulfilled in a short time. It cannot be done in one or five or ten years. It will probably take generations. We cannot have a solution according the old European model, like one size fits all or ever closer union. It will not work anymore. One of the measures coming through, though, is Europe's investment plan. With a bigger focus on employment and green jobs, it offers financial guarantees of 40 billion euros to trigger investments almost 10 times in volume. I think we are on the right track with European investment plan, with uh, European budget for the next six, seven years that is focusing a lot also on middle, small sized companies for the development of green jobs, um, for research, innovation and this is the future of Europe. Once we will have this safety for people, we will also fight better against populism and nationalism. Sonia Torres and her five colleagues belong to a research team at the medicine faculty of Cadiz University. Europe has invested hundreds of thousand euros in her team's projects. We work a lot in investigation, biomedical, basic, and clinical. We do science, we do basic and clinical biomedical research. In other words, we investigate and study what is happening in our brain and in our central nervous system. What happens when we feel chronic pain or neuropathic pain, like sciatica. They search for new medicines for diseases such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder and depression. And they know that Europe's investment is what makes their work possible. The story is different in the fishing village in Barbate, the most important fishing centre in the region. 30 years ago, it had 200 ships and 4,000 fishermen. There are only 58 ships left now. This is the impact of the European Union's fishing quotas. The fishermen are having a hard time. I would say very hard indeed. We have to go fishing in order to earn a wage. If we have had the boats tied for seven months without being able to fish, the fishermen cannot put food on the table at home. No fishing also means no business for the ship owners. Manuel says he'd scrap his if the situation like this continues, because there's no business to pass on to his son. But the mayor of a nearby town of San Fernando is more optimistic. She used the European funding to build a museum for the legend of flamenco, Cameron de la Isla here. We have to work more on it. Brussels is seen as something that sends you millions of euros and then you develop certain projects. But I think it is much more and we have to continue enhancing and making visible what it means to have a set of countries in Europe that work with a common point of view and that follow the same strategy. And despite her frustration, Rothio says she's voting in the European election. If we want to change, we will have to vote. We cannot stay the same. A change that she hopes will make the residents here feel part of Europe and makes Brussels feel closer to them.